what is miracle? When we cannot understand how certain things really happen, we cannot imagine. And then we say it is a miracle. Take for instance, David Copperfield, isn't it? Uh, you have seen how he has gone through China war. To you it is a real miracle. Because you cannot understand how he does it. So one day, when you come to know the trick, you never take this as a miracle. When a person comes and perform certain things here, magician, in the eyes of small children, all those things are real miracles today because they cannot understand. But to some of you, Although you really cannot understand the trick, you know it is a trick. There is no reality. And this is the nature of miracle. Our senses are very limited. Our thinking power is very, very limited. Simply by using these limited five senses and thinking power, we cannot understand certain incident happening. And then at once we say, oh, it is a miracle, miraculous power. I remember certain miracles that people performed or accepted as real miracles in this country a few years ago. Uh, this is the advice given by the Buddha for us neither to accept nor to reject anything. It's a very good advice. Whenever certain things happen, the Buddha says, don't accept at once that it is true. At the same time, don't reject, say your nonsense, I don't believe it. Think. Take time for you to understand. And one day you will come to know what it is. Remember this advice. Don't allow your emotion without using your sense of reasoning, without using your common sense to accept anything. Whatever people come and talk about that person or that person, he can perform miracles, he can cure any kind of sicknesses you believe at once. So what happened? Few years ago, in Klang, suddenly, from an isolated area, the water started sprinkling like a fountain. People could not understand how this water come out from this. Then they believe that this must be a miracle. Then people started coming with bottles and buckets and cups and, and collected water and drink. After drinking, they spread the news. They have been suffering from this sickness, that sickness and this and that. Now. They feel very much better. Then more and more people started coming. Muddy water actually, not clear waters. Whenever we take something with devotion, confidence, that mental energy, that mental attitude, change so many things in our physical body. So devotion or faith 
and confident for the time being. Some changes take place. So if you take anything with great confidence, you can see immediate result, good effect. Yes, on for the time being, because of your devotion. Then, a man who wanted to find out actually what is the cause of this, he came and started to dig. After digging and digging and digging, he found out underground there was a rotten pipeline. <laughs> old one, very old pipeline. It was burst from there. The water started coming up. When people came to know this news, no more miracles. That miracle is gone. If that person did not discover this, even today you accept this as a miracle. Uh, this is the nature of miracle that many religionists use to bluff others. Another one. I don't know whether you can remember. Few years ago, we had a miraculous chapati. You know chapati, Indians and Bengalis, they use Miraculous chapati which can cure, especially cancer. And one of my friends, Indian friends, also come and introduce me to take. It's very good for your heart. You can get rid of your heart trouble and problems and diabetes. Ask me to take. So what happened? They bring one chapati and keep in a plate in the evening and pour some tea, water, hot tea into this chapati. Next day morning, you can see three layers. Miracle. Because at night time, the God come and multiply. <laughs> yes. And then they try to introduce their religion also through this. Before you eat, you must thank God and reciting this prayer, then you can get rid of your sickness. Uh, spreading all over the country. Then, one doctor, the university hospital, all these are real incidents, not made up stories, who wanted to find out what is the secret of this chapati. So what he did, he collected few chapatis, in the evening and pour coffee into one, milk into another one, tea into another one, cold water to another one, hot water into another one and kept like this. Next day morning he went to see. Only that particular japati in which he poured tea multiplied, but others still remain as one. And then he analyzed T. There is something which contain uh, nicotine, or what you call not nicotine, uh, something there in that T which multiply this chapati. But coffee or hot water or milk or cold water would not do that. Uh, when this news item it appeared in Malaysia. Uh, when this news item appeared in the newspaper, that miracle was a God. A group of people were meditating at night time while holding a religious meeting. That is interreligious. This happened nearly three years ago in this country. So what happened? When they were sitting there, thousands, suddenly the light is gone. Very dark. They do not know what to do. Uh, then they ask their respective religions. They have a Buddhist, Christian, Hindus and all sort of religious people. 
to recite prayers. So group by group they went on praying, 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 praying. When one particular religious group started to pray, within few seconds the light appeared. And then someone has seen. Somebody was doing something with the switchboard at that time. <laughs> Found out the secret miracles. And this is the way how they try to introduce miracles. Now I can tell you, because I came from another country, you do not know anything about me. I can tell you, I was born in a Christian family. I have been praying to God for many years. I had an incurable sickness. Went on praying, praying, praying to God, no cure. One day one of my friends came and asked me to pray to Buddha. <laughs> Believe me, after a few weeks, that sickness completely disappeared. That is why I decided to become a monk. <laughs> you believe that? And this is the way how they try to introduce. All those miracles are like that. They can show, you see, among the followers of our religion, people are not suffering from these sicknesses because they follow this religion. And then we also have to now you can understand why the Buddha did not encourage. Don't depend on miracles. Then you can ask whether there are miracles according to the Buddha's teaching. Whether the Buddha and his disciples could manage to perform miracles. Yes. Answer is yes. When you study the life of the Buddha very carefully, you can see there were certain occasions the Buddha had to perform certain supernatural, unusual power. When he come to know that simply by teaching, advising, he cannot train, he cannot enlighten this person. Example, Angulimala, that murderer, is a terror. He wanted to catch the Buddha by raising his sword to cut him. He started running, chasing after him. The Buddha walked in a normal way, without running. This man started running and running and running and running by using full speed. But he cannot reach come nearer to the Buddha. The more he run, the more he goes <laughs> behind, cannot reach. But this man cannot understand what is happening. Now he cannot run anymore, he is tired. Then he asked the Buddha to stop. Then he knew this is the time to talk to him. Because he is such a strong, dynamic young man, he knew it is impossible to train him simply by advising. Allow him to run and run and run until he gets fed up. Now then he says, stop. The Buddha says, yes. Do you know, I have stopped long ago. You are the one who runs. Then you have, what do you mean by that? How can you say you have stopped? I saw you are also walking. But I did not run, isn't it? Ah, yes, it is true. Then he asked, 
what is the secret what is the reason why i could not catch you after running for more than 3 miles then the buddha said do you know why you could not catch me <laughs> because you run if you stop your running you can catch me he could not understand and uh, then he explained running means by committing all sort of evil and wicked and sinful thing the person prepare a very long journey in sansara running and running and running endless birth and death and birth and death and birth and death running that is the meaning of running you are doing that i told you i have stopped i have stopped all these bad and wicked and harmful things and i have stopped this journey this birth and death no more for me that is the meaning of saying i have stopped and you are the one who run ah, it, it has become a real miracle to this young man yeah can i follow you why not and then he became a monk after that he led the holy life so it is a miracle but he never tried to show this unless he come to know that simply by preaching that he cannot open his mind this is one of the extraordinary characteristics in the buddha there are six six kinds of characteristics which we cannot find in any other religious teachers or any other arahantas or any holy man only in the buddha so one of them is by knowing the mentality understanding capacity the nature of the mind how far this person can understand and how this person had prepared his background life after life how he cultivated how he developed trained his mind the buddha is the only one who can understand so before his preaching he survey and study the mentality of all these people that is why directly just like giving an injection he can approach and point out certain thing which influence affects and open the mind to understand that is the secret why many people attain sainthood arahanthood on the spot instantly because of this but many others preach blindly not knowing what they can understand whether they like or not whether they can appreciate or not that is why we cannot gain any so in the case of the buddha he always study the nature of the mind then talk so when he come to know simply by talking it is impossible for this person to open his mind to understand and then he perform this kind of minor supernatural power for that person to open the mind when he opened his mind through that supernatural phenomena and then start to pray and that is the technique he had so many technique 
according to the mentality, character, temperament, mood, attitude, education of all the devotees. Then how do they perform miracles from the Buddhist point of view? There is no divine power behind these miracles. Not through the influence of any god or deva. It is pure psychological. The development of the mind psychic power. When a person practices meditation, especially jhana meditation or samadha meditation, this particular technique is to develop the mental faculties to gain some sort of supernatural mental power. So after gaining this supernatural mental power, they can show certain things which others cannot understand, others cannot do. So they think these are miracles or supernatural power. They can disappear suddenly and reappear somewhere else. It is true. When they develop this mind creative, then they can fly like a bird. They can walk on the water. So one day, when the Buddha was going somewhere, he met a man who had practiced this meditation for a long time near a river. Then he told the Buddha, do you know, I got that some supernatural or miraculous power through my meditation. Now I can walk to cross the river, walk on the water. He, he was very proud about his achievement. Then the Buddha asked, how long did you practice this meditation to gain this power? He said, 25 years. <laughs> the Buddha says, utter waste each. Wasted your life for 25 years. An ordinary man can cross this river by spending 25 cents. Paying to a boatman to take you to the other side of the river. <laughs> and this is the Buddha's attitude toward this kind of miracle. To him, there is no religious value. Do you know Devadatta, the Buddha's cousin brother, a monk, who gained this miraculous power, can appear and disappear, transform himself to appear as devils or ghosts or birds, transform. Miraculous power. So when he wanted to gain power, worldly power, he influenced and misled another young king, King Ajatasat, persuaded him to kill his own father so that you can rule the country. I'll kill the Buddha. So we too can rule the whole country by using miraculous power. That a stupid young prince accepted his advice. And he tried to kill the Buddha by using miraculous power. Because they gained this miraculous power without developing purity in the mind, by keeping their anger, their craving, their selfishness, their jealousy, they can develop this mind, that mental energy, to gain this supernatural power. 
then what will happen? They can misuse and abuse this power for gain worldly things. Very dangerous. Now this is one of the reasons why the Buddha did not encourage. To him there is nothing. Then how do we gain this? We do not know the nature of mental energy. Mental energy is the most dynamic, the strongest force in this universe. It is true. All the other existing dynamic forces were discovered by the human mind. Handle, manipulate by using this human mind. Either for constructive or destructive purpose, diverted by using this human mind. Now you can understand how powerful it is. Now we are wasting, wasting, wasting for nothing. That is called ignorance. We do not know the value or the dynamic force or how to divert our mental energy without wasting for unnecessary things. Through our five senses, every day, how much mental energy that we waste. Through our imaginations, how much energy we waste. If you know how to accumulate and harness this energy, then this mental energy becomes the most powerful energy that we can divert, direct to do anything in this world. Example, there's a big waterfall in a jungle. You can see every day the water pouring and flowing. Waste. When an engineer Having seen this waterfall, decided to build a dam to, to collect the water without wasting. Then he tried to pick the hydroelectric to supply electricity. Can illuminate the whole country. and can support those farmers for cultivation, channel proper manner without wasting this water, that energy, uh, in the same manner. If you know how to divert our mental energy without wasting for unnecessary things, our mind, can, we can develop our knowledge, our courage, our understanding, our wisdom, our energy. Now we are hopeless, we are powerless. We surrender ourselves to any stupid man. We believe anything because we have no more energy, mental energy, wasted. You know how to accumulate this. Then unnecessary fear that we maintain in our mind never appear anymore. We are scared of so many things for nothing. Shameful actually speaking. We disgrace our human intelligence. Scared of this, scared of that. For nothing. Imagination. Because no power, no energy in our mind. And we have no strong determination in our mind. Very weak, very. Because mind is weak. We know how to use this energy 
you can develop that to maintain courage to face any problem to overcome so many problem to avoid so many problem instead of going praying to this god that god this devil this ghost and uh, burning this and that throw away all this rubbish you have your energy mental energy so when you go pray and pray and pray and pray that really shows you have no mental energy at all all wasted one who knows one who can understand can throw away all this rubbish try to understand where are the mistake what is the cause who is responsible is the worshiping and worshiping and burning and burning so we are not behaving as real human beings actually speaking because we do not know how to develop mental energy all the other existing religions in this world advise human beings to surrender themselves surrender their mind to somebody and pray and pray and beg and beg that's all what did the buddha say what is his attitude it is not necessary for you to surrender to anybody it is not necessary for you to go and beg and beg there's nothing you can gain from outside you must know how to make use of your own human mind when you develop this human mind you can conquer the whole world he said i could manage to conquer the whole world not by praying to any god worshiping not by reciting any mantras not by performing any rites and rituals only by developing and developing and cultivating my mind pure mental energy is there buddhism the buddha's teaching directly emphasize towards human mind unfortunately we have very strong ignorance we do not know how to make use of this human mind so when we develop this anything whatever we need whether it is supernatural power or supernatural living beings to gain anything if you know how to make use of the human mind the buddha has introduced the method how to do that that is called buddhism buddhism means the method introduced by the buddha for us to use our human mind remember this without abusing without disgracing without insulting our human mind by maintaining our human dignity can stand as gentlemen if we really follow the advice given by the buddha then what will happen the unnecessary fear that we have in our mind all disappear no more suspicion we have in our mind due to lack of understanding also disappear because of our imagination and ignorance we maintain this belief or devil ghost a spirit unto god create all these problems and trouble but this stupid mind cannot understand our human mind is responsible for all these problems that is what the buddha said we have forgotten the first tense of the dhammapada in the buddha say mano upangama dhamma our minds are responsible for all these good and bad happening occurrences incidents in this world 
So if we know how to guard, how to protect, how to utilize, how to make use of this human mind, then we can see a peaceful, happy, prosperous world life. Without doing this, what we do? We go and pray and pray and pray and worship and worship and worship. Never try to develop, never try to purify, never try to cultivate our own mind. We want somebody else to come and purify the mind. If you are cruel, if you are jealous, if your way of life is harmful or dangerous, you can go and pray, I am very wicked, please take away my wickedness, I want to be a good man. Do you think there is anybody in this world, any God or any Buddha, who can take away your cruelty from your mind, unless you make up your own mind? You, it is your work. You have to decide, you have to determine, you must understand. Ah, then, slowly, you can withdraw your weaknesses, then cultivate and replace with kindness and sympathy and understanding. And this is the method taught by the Buddha. This is called Buddhism. So Buddhism is not for us to depend on miracles, not just to go and pray and pray and worship, but to live as culture harmless, respectable, human being. That is Buddhism. Without doing that, whatever we do, there is no real religious life. So do you want to cultivate your miraculous power to appear and disappear and do some bank robbery? Uh, that is what many people want to develop this meditation and get supernatural power, suddenly disappear and if you are inside the bank at night time, <laughs> just like Devadatta, what he did. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't depend on miracles, my dear friend. Uh, as I mentioned, when you develop our mind, we can, we can, or naturally, I can give an example. Uh, this happened in uh, Sri Lanka, I think more than 1,500 years ago, a monk who had developed his meditation and meditation and meditation and developed this miraculous power. By using this miraculous power, he can create anything in this world. If anybody asks him to create anything, instantly he creates. There you are. He had a disciple, a monk. He also learned meditation from his teacher. But the teacher is cleverer than, sorry, the disciple is cleverer than the disciple, the teacher. He went on developing, developing and developing. He has attained the higher stage of sainthood, arahanta. After attaining his arahanta, the disciple wanted to find out whether his teacher also attained the higher stage or not. Now then he realized actually teacher has not developed further after gaining this supernormal or supernatural power. He stopped thinking that he also gained the higher stage. Then he came to see the teacher and asked, may I know whether you have attained the higher stage of sainthood or arahanta? Uh, then the teacher why not? How can you prove? The disciple asked. Well, I can create anything in this world. Do you think an ordinary man can do that? Uh, then the disciple say, okay, very good. Now, can you create a huge elephant in front of you? Oh, very easy. Instant, there you are. Huge elephant is standing there. See? 
very good. Disciples is very clever. Now, can you ask this elephant to come and charge, attack you? Yes. Now, then he asked the elephant to come in and now the elephant is coming, raising the trunk. Then the elephant come near to this place, the teachers, and they got up and they had to run away. Then, the disciple asked, My dear teacher, you said you are an arahant. Do you know arahantas have no fear? <laughs> if you have attained arahanta, why do you want to run away? So it clearly shows you are not an arahant. Uh, then the teacher realized his weakness. From that day onward, he tried to develop further and further. Later, he also attained it. Uh, this is the danger of miraculous power. When we gain something supernatural, we think we have attained the highest stage and nothing, no more. Stop. But later again it dropped. Dropped from all these things. Now Devadatta who developed that miraculous power, everything is gone. Because he has become a very cruel person, so according to Buddhism he is in hell now, he is suffering. Because of the wicked, dangerous thing that he has committed. So miraculous power is not the solution for us to be religious, to be noble, to find out our salvation or to lead a religious life. Only our understanding. Our understanding, our character, our way of life, how far we can maintain our goodness. It is like this. To understand this, I can tell you. When others doubt you, if you can trust you, that is more than enough. Can you understand it? All the others doubt you, but you trust. That means you have no guilty conscience in your mind. You know you are correct. You know you are right. That is enough. 